finally a blockbuster movie that is not a sequel. I mean, it's not original, but like, you know what I mean? Hello, I'm Ryan Donato. Hello, hello, welcome back to another hard review. Today I am here to talk about Dungeons and Dragons, Honor Amongst Thieves. This is the new John Francis Daly and Jonathan Goldstein who are responsible for the script for Spider-Man Homecoming. They also directed Game Night, which is very great, and Vacation, which is very not great. So obviously we're hoping to bank on the Game Night success that was with Jason and Bateman and Rachel McAdams. It was wildly funny, but it wasn't really focused on a specific game necessarily, whereas this is a movie about Dungeons and Dragons. Obviously, Dungeons and Dragons is very popular. This movie does not seem like it's gaining any like major attention, but it came out at South by Southwest, and I heard some of my fellow critics were like, oh, it's actually really good. And so I got really excited about it. I had to review it for Disappointment Media. I found a early screening that was not a press screening. It was just a fan screening, like a regal fan experience screening. I thought it was okay. Like, I don't know. I kind of felt like it was a bunch of other movies you've seen before but like worse it was kind of like guardians of the galaxy meets lord of the rings but like worse you got your ragtag group of thieves you know bad guys who are not really bad guys they got a good heart and they're kind of goofy sometimes and this little ragtag team's got to come together and become a family so they could stop the bad guy who's gonna hurt everybody so these bad guys are now going to save everyone and come into our hearts i guess chris pine from Star Trek fame is in this movie along with Michelle Rodriguez. These are mainly our two leads and Chris Pine always does a very good job. I think he's a great actor. He's kind of just doing his typical James T. Kirk from the J.J. Abrams Star Trek movies thing and it works generally. Michelle Rodriguez is playing Michelle Rodriguez once again because that's the only role that she knows how to play but this one she's kind of funny. It's almost like in a little bit of a Drax kind of a way where it's like very deadpan so it's kind of even funnier and the action from her is obviously better than anyone else justice smith who you guys might recognize from detective pikachu in jurassic world the second one which was not dominion it was definitely called dinosaur mansion oh man fall down jurassic world fall rainfall oh my god oh my god i like this one too that's the sad part jurassic world extinction no it's like Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. He's playing the exact same character he plays in every single movie that he does. He's the nerdy guy who's really insecure, but he's trying his best and he's like Skrulls, but he's too nerdy and he just doesn't believe in himself. It gets really old and tired and he's really annoying. Sophia Lillis from the It movies is in this movie as well. She's the shape-shifting girl and she is really cool, specifically because of her power set is the most visually pleasing to watch. Hugh Grant is kind of the adversary, former member of the team, turned foe. He's funny and like, I like Hugh Grant and I, I think he's a very charismatic actor, but his character is very whatever forgettable. And then the guy from Bridgerton is in this, but he like, he's not really in it because he's only there for like a scene, really. I did think that the action was really great in this movie. Like there's a sequence specifically where Sophia Lillis's character is shape-shifting between different animals as she's trying to escape from somewhere and that is really fun to watch visually the fat dragon was cool that kind of handicapped him in some kind of ways but also helped him in other type of ways and then specifically the setting that they were at was like interesting visually for the sequence the maze game that they go to at the end that was a lot of fun the action's great but visually this movie's disgusting <laughs> like the cinematography and the special effects are really just subpar i would say like visually I really did not enjoy looking at this movie despite the really awesome character designs of these practical like creatures in the world which was really really cool like there was some like dragon lizard type looking dudes some cat people that might have been cgi but like there was a lot of stuff that you could tell was real and i really appreciated that and it really went a long way to make me feel like this was an actual world where there was more than just like people and it was filled with fantastical creatures who actually functioned there and i see how they function there it is generally funny like i said the action is good so i think casual audiences will generally enjoy this i think D D fans will specifically enjoy it even though I don't feel like there was too many references to the game even though I can't really say because I don't really play the games. Everyone kind of has like their role, their job that they do and we're in a fantasy world. There's a wizard, you know, this and that and creatures and you're trying to get through and not everyone get through and everyone has powers but they do specific things. It worked as an adaptation of the game but overall there's nothing really original and inspired here whatsoever. While it may not be attached to some pre-existing movie franchise, it is very easy to be cynical about it and just be like oh i could see the studio checklist that went into making this movie like no one had a passion project to make this they were like hey we have an ip 
we want to do something with it. Hey, you made a game movie, like a board game type movie. Why don't you come do this? You're pretty funny. Make it funny. Make it like the Guardians of the Galaxy, but also make it cool like Lord of the Rings because it's a big fantasy epic. I can just see to a T. I'm like, yes, I do appreciate the effort to like flesh out the main four characters of the group and try to give them somewhat of an arc. None of that really landed for me at all. And even the story, their whole rise to becoming these good-hearted thieves that save the day in the end, it just felt like it wasn't natural and it just felt like it was like a checklist like oh this is the standard story that we're trying to tell and we have to keep following along even in the end like they're during like a spoilerish type moment i won't say the spoiler but it was like very obvious that there was gonna be a callback that like something was gonna be used to do something in the plot and they've been telegraphing it for like 10 15 minutes and some guy right before it happened goes hey they're gonna do that and i was like dude you're an idiot don't talk in theaters also don't have your phone out or have your watch out like that you're just as bad if not worse especially when you do like this and then you can't see that it's flashing behind for everyone to see yeah like the audience for this was terrible there's a mid-credit scene make sure to stay for that it's generally fine there's not too too much to be cynical about but there's nothing like really to be inspired by and be like oh you gotta go see this movie because i think this is a three out of five i had a good time i don't think anything was really above average and i can't see myself ever watching it again or even recommending really anybody to go see this movie unless they're specifically like a really big D and D fan. What's your favorite fantasy movie? Obviously, mine is the Twelve Hour Lord of the Rings cut. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and why don't you guys tell me if you ever played D and D, what your character would be? I would be barterer.